Hello to everyone at Emmanuel Church Durham who's watching online. My name is Jeremy Webb. Um, if you don't know me, that's because we have uh, joined the church uh, since lockdown has happened. And so hopefully we'll get to meet you in person at some point soon. I want to start today by talking, off, uh, talking about King David. Um, I've just been looking at his life recently and just been amazed by all that God did with him and all that God did through him. Um, he really was um, probably the greatest leader that uh, Israel um, ever had and has ever had. Um, and he is famed, rightly so, for um, leading his people into many fantastic victories and expanding the borders um, of Israel. Um, but this success that he had, um, it wasn't down to just his charismatic leadership and his military skills, although those things were definitely true. Um, there were definitely natural gifting there that had been put in there by God. Um, but it, these victories, um, the reason he's as famous as he is, the reason why there was so much favour upon him was because he knew and he valued the face of God. And he spent his days seeking him out. And when he spoke, he obeyed. And it tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 7, this is just one example where it says, David inquired of the Lord and he said to God, should I pursue the enemy? Should I go after them? He wanted to know what God's plan was. He wanted to know what God's will was. The, the sensible option was to do this. But was that the right thing to do? He loved the intimacy with God. He loved being in the presence of his father. And we know that he just loved worshipping. Um, he, he didn't care what people thought. He was happy to dance in his underwear through the streets of Jerusalem because he, the, the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant had returned to its rightful place amongst his people. This was um, an amazing time for them, um, but quite quickly the, the story turns sour. Um, as I'm sure you know, um, David fell into, um, into lust um, and the lust um, of his heart, which he followed after, led to serious problems with his children. Um, it led to difficulties with his family line um, and curses upon them. He had everything. He had power. He had fame. He had the adoration of the people. He had closeness with God. And yet he allowed the rot in for one moment of when he looked at Bathsheba with lustful eyes. Have you been there? I think... Uh, Every one of us can say, yeah, I've been there. I've been in that place where I made a decision. I, I, I stepped into something. It was, a, it was a mistake. I shouldn't have gone there. I followed the desires of my flesh. Maybe it wasn't sex like, uh, like David. Maybe it was something else. But whatever it is, whatever it was, it always leads to shame. And then we try and cover it up. And we, in doing so, we separate ourselves from the source of life. Sounds familiar because it's happened right from the beginning of time. We've been doing it since uh, creation. As, as you may know, in Eden, we were in this place of closeness, of intimacy with God, where he had created us and he placed us in this paradise to, to nurture creation with him and to co-labor alongside um, our father. And he placed there, um, he placed there a tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so right in the middle of this place where heaven and earth are together, just as it should be, there's this, there's this choice. And God always gives us that choice. Um, and that choice was, will you let me decide? 
what is good and what is evil. He wants us to live with him. He wants us to live in intimacy with him. Um, but there's always a choice. He's not going to force us. But the choice is, will you let him decide what the definition of good and evil is? We know the story. Um, Adam and Eve are, uh, are given, the, uh, given the choice. They're told, well, you can define what's right and wrong. You can decide what's good and evil. And they take that choice, as each one of us has over, uh, over our lifetime many times. And at that point, shame enters the world. And what do they do? They, they run and they hide away. And then the, the downward spiral of man's sin begins and the chaos enters the world through sickness and sinfulness and people are from the mo from Cain from the first murder it, it, the ball is rolling and violence and jealousy and lust um, just fills the earth but all along God had a plan his plan was to save his people from this mess that uh, when that happens when we define our own good and evil. Um, and he wanted to restore us into that closeness where heaven and earth are together. That's what he wants. Heaven and earth together, physical, spiritual, together. And he chose a man called Abraham. Uh, outright, he brought him out of the chaos of pagan, idolatrous Babylon. And he declared the promise of restoration over him through his offspring. And so the con story continues with God's great love being shown, his acts of mercy being shown to the Israelites again and again and again, to this chaotic and disobedient people. Um, and even when glimmers of hope come, like with David, time after time, we choose to define good and evil for ourselves. And we suffer the consequences of that. And the people of, the people of God, the Israelites, be, became so depraved, became so separated from God, they didn't even recognise him as being different from the idols of their neighbours that they were worshipping. Israel had a very long line of kings, starting with Saul and then David, and then many, many after that. And ultimately, none of them, could defeat the power of sin. None of them could bring the people to a place where they wanted God more than anything else because each of them was weak and each of them was making mistakes themselves. And ultimately, Israel was scattered and destroyed. But God kept speaking and he kept speaking through his prophets, pointing the people to the time when a Messiah was going to come. There was one who would come, who, was, who would save them, who would bring them out of this chaos and who would restore that relationship between heaven and earth. It was going to be a man king. How could this be? We've had so many kings and, and they've all failed. But God had this plan brought about through Jesus Christ and his kingdom would confront evil and bless all the nations. In fact, uh, God said in Hose through the prophet Hosea in 40, Hosea 14, 4, he said, I will heal their waywardness and I will love them freely. And so when Jesus arrived on the scene and began to announce the kingdom is here, what he was saying was, I'm the king. You can't have a kingdom without a king. I'm the king of this kingdom. And he began to restore order, order in the chaos, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. He was bringing the rule of the king to the kingdom. God was once again with his people. He, he called himself Emmanuel, God with us. He was once again, heaven and earth were together. But he's, and his only message was let me define what good and evil is. He was like the new tree of good and evil. 
that was once in the Garden of Eden. But now we've got this tree, it's Jesus on the cross, and we have to come to him and we have to choose to submit to this king of this great kingdom. This was not a, um, this was not a, a decision that he asked lightly. When he asked this decision, he expected an immediate response. It wasn't like, a, uh, I'll have a think about it and come back to you at a later date. No, he wanted, he wanted immediate response. Come, follow me. Will you follow me? Come with me. And you, we, you, you'll have heard many times the stories of where the disciples were called and they, had to, they left everything. And they just followed after him. The kingdom is here and Jesus is offering order in the chaos. But we have to come into submission to the king. If we want to live in his kingdom, we've got to submit to the king. We've got to listen to his voice. We've got to obey his voice. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 25, he said, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? The Israelites, the Jews, They've waited hundreds of years for the Messiah to save them and restore the glory of God to, amongst them. And yet when it came, when, he, when it happened, when the Saviour was there, they missed it. Because what they were presented with was not what they had expected. It, it wasn't what they had planned. They had this idea as to what this Messiah was going to look like and what he was going to do. And when Jesus came, he, he, didn't, fit, he didn't fit in the box. And so we've got, to, we've got to be ready to let go of what we think it's going to look like. We've got to let go of what we think he's going to do or what he should do. We've got to let go of what we think life's about. What, what is success in life? We've got to let go of, oh, I should have this, I, I, I should have that. We've got to let it all go. Jesus is saying, you've got to be like a dead man. If you want to gain life, you've got to lose life. That means we've got to give up everything. We've got to be willing just to drop and look to him and look into his face because that's what we were created for. We were created for this intimacy. We were created to be close to the Father. We were created to give glory to him day and night, night and day. And if he says this is good, it's good. And if he says this is evil, it's evil. We don't get to decide. We just get to follow. And following is the freest you will ever be. We've been promised life and life to the full. When we look into his eyes and obey and follow, that is when we find freedom. Not when we get to do whatever we please, when we get to walk with him, where, our, where obedience is greater for us than anything else. And so my question for us today is, will, will you submit? Maybe you have called yourself a follower for many years, but you've still never really submitted to the king. You want a place in the kingdom, but there's some things that you really don't want to let go of. Jesus is calling you right now, saying, come, come follow me. See what life is like when I'm in control. Let's submit to the King of Kings knowing that he is good and his love for us endures forever. I hope that uh, that has touched something inside of you. And so I just want to pray for, um, pray for all of us right now. Jesus, I pray that we would recognise that you are good. We recognise that you are God. I pray that we would submit our lives before you and that no matter what the circumstances no matter what's 
come uh, before, no matter what's happened, that we would bow the knee and we would say, Jesus, you are Lord. Holy Spirit, would you help us now? Come into our hearts and help us to be your humble servants and to adore you with our whole lives. We surrender everything, Jesus, to you. Amen.